Okay, let's tie this all together. So we talked about cells changing energy and bioenergetics. We talked about enzymes catalyzing those chemical reactions. Now, let's talk about the super awesome process, cellular respiration. We're gonna focus on aerobic cellular respiration, which is a process of cells using enzymes to break down food and in the process, generating ATP, that usable form of energy that cells need to exist. All right, so remember we talked about there's potential energy in the bonds of molecules. Okay, so those molecules that are covalently bonded together, there's some energy stored in there. We just gotta get to it by breaking apart that bond. By breaking a bond, by breaking a covalent bond, remember covalent, we're sharing electrons, we're sharing those valence electrons, those outermost electrons, yeah? When we break a covalent bond, we're basically releasing those valence electrons from that molecule. Those electrons represent a form of energy, okay? So electrons, energy, in a way. They're not, they're not a super useful form of energy right now, but we can use these electrons to do other things that will eventually lead to building ATP. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so when we break a covalent bond, we're releasing electrons from that molecule. And when a molecule or an atom has lost electrons, when the electrons have been removed from that molecular atom, we say it has been oxidized. So here, we are gonna take some electrons off of X and we're gonna give them to Y. So we're moving electrons from X, we say X is oxidized, okay? So losing electrons, oxidation. And remember these electrons represent a form of energy that can eventually be used to make ATP. But these electrons don't just spontaneously run away usually. They need to be typically pulled away or pulled off of that molecule or that atom. So usually these electrons are transferred to another atom or molecule. The atom or molecule which takes those electrons away once it gains those electrons from the molecular atom that's been oxidized, right? So here we're gonna take electrons away from X. X is oxidized. We're gonna pass those electrons to Y. So Y will accept those electrons. It will gain those electrons. We say it has been reduced. Okay, so we call these together redox reactions, oxidation reduction or reduction oxidation, redox. Because every time something is oxidized, another atom or molecule is reduced. Okay, these happen in pairs. One is oxidized, another is reduced. They happen always coupled together. So together, whoever loses an electron, we say they're oxidized. Whoever gains an electron becomes reduced. The way I remember this is Leo says Ger. Lose electron oxidation, gain electron reduction. Okay, whatever atom loses the electron has become oxidized. Whatever atom gains the electron has become reduced, atom or molecule. Okay, so these together are redox reactions. And the reason why we're talking about these now is because that's what's happening in cellular respiration. We are going to oxidize glucose and eventually reduce oxygen to make water. Okay, but it's the same basic idea. That's how the fuel in your car works. That's how we burn coal to get energy. We burn natural gas or any sort of hydrocarbon, right? Carbon bonded to hydrogen. That's how we get energy out of fossil fuels. We burn them. That process of quote unquote burning, combustion reactions are usually redox reactions. We're gonna take electrons off of this molecule right here, methane. Methane is a component of natural gas. We're gonna take electrons off of it. We're gonna pass those electrons to oxygen. So methane will be oxidized into carbon dioxide. Remember, it's gonna take electrons off of it, so it's gonna lose some energy. We pass its electrons to oxygen. But when oxygen gains extra electrons, it becomes water, basically. So it'll become, those oxygens become negatively charged when they gain electrons, because electrons have a negative charge, right? So if you give electrons to an atom, it becomes negative. So oxygen becomes negative, it's gonna grab on some positive hydrogens floating around. Just another example of how this works outside of the cell. We burn something, we oxidize it, and then oxygen is reduced. 
So how does this work inside of a cell? How cells make ATP? Here's our big picture here, okay? And remember, this is gonna happen in many small steps. This is our overall equation from start to finish, what's gonna happen, but every single tiny step that we're gonna talk about is happening in even smaller steps. It's being catalyzed by an enzyme, many different enzymes, okay? So what's happening here is we will oxidize glucose. We will take the electrons off of glucose. We're gonna reduce oxygen into water. So we oxidize glucose into carbon dioxide. We pass those electrons eventually to, water, to oxygen, which makes water. That process of removing these electrons from glucose, we're gonna happen in many, many steps and we're gonna harvest some energy off of it. We're gonna get some energy out of it. That energy is gonna take the form of ATP. And we call this whole process cellular respiration. This is how we take the molecules in the food which we eat, the chemical potential energy that's stored in the bonds of that molecules of the food that we eat. We take those electrons off of our food and we use those electrons to make ATP. We're gonna focus first on aerobic cellular respiration. So it's a process of generating ATP in the presence of oxygen. This process, aerobic cellular respiration, requires both oxygen and mitochondria. So it requires oxygen and mitochondria. If either one of those are missing, aerobic respiration, aerobic cellular respiration will not function. All right, again, big picture here. You should probably remember this. We're gonna take glucose. I'm gonna add in some oxygen. There's our reactants, glucose and oxygen. Oxidized glucose into carbon dioxide. So we're gonna break apart glucose, we're gonna break apart the bonds in glucose, release those electrons that are stored in the covalent bonds of glucose to form carbon dioxide. Those electrons are gonna have quite a journey until they finally end up being added to oxygen to form water. And that journey these electrons take is how we make energy, is how we make ATP. So we're gonna move some electrons around. So this process, aerobic respiration, because it requires oxygen, is gonna generate anywhere from like 30 to 32, sometimes you'll see 34 ATP. That number varies. It varies on how many, how efficient that cell is really at respiration. Um, I promise I won't try and trick you on an exam or anything. So 30 to 32 is our kind of our average for most cells, how many ATP molecules they generate for every one glucose molecule. Again, this process is only possible if mitochondria are present in the cell. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the anatomy of our mitochondria first. Right, so we have this inner matrix space, it's kind of like the cytoplasm that was this bacterial cell, right? So it's kind of a watery cytoplasm fluid area. We have the inner membrane, okay? And then we have a space between this inner membrane and the outer membrane. All of those locations will be significant when we talk about respiration. So we should know what's happening in each step of respiration. We should know the products and the reactants for that step of respiration and where is it occurring, okay? So different parts of this process of cellular respiration are gonna happen in different parts of the cell. So glucose is gonna be oxidized, okay? So we're gonna break those electrons off of glucose. We're gonna take those electrons off of glucose, but where do they go? For a minute, they're gonna be held by what we call NAD+, okay? And it will convert it to NADH once it has gained electrons, okay? so. Throughout this process, it's gonna be happening many, 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 many steps. In most of these steps, we're gonna take some electrons off of glucose. We'll pass them off to NAD+, which converts it, once NAD+, has gained electrons, it has been reduced to NADH. So this is its reduced form. NADH is its reduced form, meaning it has extra electrons, it's gained electrons. So we will oxidize glucose, transfer those electrons to NAD+, which reduces it to NADH. This isn't ATP though. 
What NAD plus is, it's what we call an intermediate electron carrier. So it's not the final stop for those electrons, but it's going to get those electrons where it needs to go. I like to think of NAD plus and NADH like electron messengers or electron mailmen. They're going to carry those electrons to where they need to go so that way we can make ATP with those electrons. Okay, because electrons are a source of energy. So in cellular respiration, we're really just moving electrons around so that way eventually we can build ATP. So electrons from food molecules. Food molecules will be oxidized. We're going to talk here specifically about glucose, but we'll oxidize glucose. We will then transfer those electrons to our intermediate electron carriers, NAD+. It will be reduced to NADH. We'll see another one later called FAD, but food molecules are oxidized. We're going to pass those electrons to our intermediate electron carrier, NAD+. Those electrons will then be transported to some enzymes, a chain of enzymes in the mitochondria called the electron transport chain. Here the electrons will be used in the mitochondria in the electron transport chain to generate the power necessary to build ATP, adenosine triphosphate, from adenosine diphosphate and a, a third phosphate group. So the electrons are going to be passed from glucose to our intermediate electron carrier, finally to our electron transport chain in the mitochondria and they'll be used to make ATP, but they don't end up directly in ATP. They provide the energy necessary to build ATP. But this is the flow of energy in cellular respiration. You should be able to trace where electrons are going in all of these steps of cellular respiration. Glucose to NAD+, to electron transport chain, which provides the energy necessary to build ATP. Oh boy, okay, so we are going to break cellular respiration up into four steps. You might see it broken up into three steps, but I like to break it up into four, it just kind of makes it more clear. We should know, again, what's going into each step, and what do we get out, and where does it happen? Where in the cell is it going? First step, glycolysis, sugar breaking, happens in the cytoplasm. Second step, pyruvate oxidation, happens as the products of our first step move into the mitochondria. Citric acid cycle, we're going to complete the oxidation of glucose, of what was glucose in the citric acid cycle. Take all the electrons off of it that we can in the citric acid cycle. This is happening in the matrix of the mitochondria. Remember that watery center of the mitochondria. Lastly, our electron transport chain and ATP synthase is our last step. This is happening across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So those inner folds of that mitochondria, this is where the electron transport chain is happening. So overview, glycolysis, glucose gets broken down into pyruvate. We're going to make a little ATP and we're going to transfer some electrons to NAD plus to make it NADH. This is happening in the cytoplasm. So glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. Pyruvate will then get transferred into these mitochondria to form what we call acetyl-CoA in the pyruvate oxidation step. And then, so our second step right here, acetyl-CoA enters in the citric acid cycle where we complete the oxidation of glucose. We complete stripping all of the electrons off of what was glucose in the citric acid cycle. Then the electrons that were being carried by NADH and FADH2, those intermediate electron carriers, they make their way to the electron transport chain which provides the energy to make ATP. All right, that's our overview. In our next video, we're gonna dive into what's happening in each of those steps of cellular respiration.